Welcome to Art with Mrs. Cap, where we are going on a journey through the world of art and the many histories and cultures that influence it. Whether you're a kid or a kid at heart, wanting to learn more about the art world, this is the podcast for you. So join us as we journey through art with Mrs. Cap. Welcome to today's episode. So we are going to be traveling to Japan. And um, we're going to be traveling thousands of years ago to Japan, to the 6th and 7th century in Japan. So we're going to be looking at something that's really cool. Um, When we kind of go to early history and art, we don't always have the names of the artists. We might know the ruler that commissioned it. We might know... um, where it was done, the culture, you know, and the people that did it, but we don't always have a name and a history of an individual from those times that did the work. But today for this work, we do. So the artist is Toribushi and um, he was a Japanese sculptor. He was active during the late 6th and early 7th century. Um, He's from the clan called Kuratsukuri, and it is saddle makers is what that meant. Um, So his full title was Shiba no Kuratsukuri Bino Abito Tori Bushi. And hopefully I didn't mutilate that. (laughs) So um, his title meant the maker of Buddhist images. And so that is what marks his career. He um, was making Buddhist images for the rulers of Japan um, during the Asuka period. And he did a lot of bronze work during this time. It is noteworthy because of his background as saddle maker or his clan being the saddle makers that he had experience with metal casting, um, working with lacquer and wood carving. These are things that would help influence his work in um, Buddhist imagery. His grandfather, Shiba Tato, immigrated to Japan from the Asian mainland in 522. So Shiba and his son, Tasuna, um, were both saddle makers. And this was kind of an apprenticeship kind of a thing that was passed on from father to son and so forth and um, really influenced um, Tori's work. So um, because they came from China, there is definitely some influence in um, styles and the way, like the designs and so forth. It definitely shows the history of his family immigrating to Japan from China. So it is believed that a lot of his work derives from the Chinese Wei Kingdom of the late 4th to 6th century. And this style used um, sculpting rock, you know, in caves. And even though Tori would work with clay for bronze casting, his pieces really reflect that Chinese front-oriented design um, and surface flatness that you would get because you were carving into the rock in a cave. So even though he had the opportunity and the ability because of what he was working with to do, um, you know, work that is 360 or more, you know, surrounded and so forth, he still kept to that Northern Way dynasty um, statuary tradition. And so that really sets his work apart from some of his contemporaries and some of the others that were doing work in this style. 
His style is seen as really conveying this peaceful, soft um, feeling in spite of the fact that it sticks with the, you know, this real rigid um, stop poses and geometrical features. He really brings in that peace and that softness with his work. The work that we're looking at specifically today is known as the Shaka Triad in Horiyuji, and it is from 623. So it is considered to be Tori's masterpiece. Um, many art historians agree on that topic, that it is his masterpiece. We know that it was commissioned by the Empress Suiku, who lived from 593 to 629. Um, there is an inscription on the back of the halo that states that the Empress and courtiers commissioned the piece. It's believed they commissioned the piece after the death of two notable court ladies in 621. And then with the illness of the Prince Shotoku, who was the nephew of the Empress. Um, he was also a politician and um, pretty well-known legendary regent during the um, Asuka period of Japan under the Empress, his aunt. Um, so both he and his consort um, got ill and they ended up dying in 622. And so it is believed that this work was commissioned to either help heal their recovery or to ease their rebirth into paradise. Whatever the case may be, Tori finished the work the next year in 623. The work itself is a casting, which means it's made out of bronze, of a massive Buddhist statue. It is a triad. So at the center you have Buddha, and then Buddha is attended by two other figures, um, one on the right and one on the left. So the statue is dated 623. The style originates from Northern Way art. The style of the statue is known as the Tory style because it is his style. Um, so the style is named after him. Um, it's characterized by the kind of 2D um, features of the figures and the patterns that are repetitive on the cloth that the triad sits upon. At each corner of the triad are four wooden Shiteno statues from the end of the Asuka period. These are considered the oldest examples of Shiteno statues in Japan. Shiteno statues represented the four heavenly kings. Those were Buddhist gods that represented the different directions of the world, north, west, east, south. And this concludes our discussion today on this period of Japanese art. See you next time. We hope you enjoyed today's podcast. Be sure to subscribe and check out more episodes as we travel through the world of art and art history to have a better understanding of our own ties to the culture and history of humanity.